Um, so I'm going to get to uh, Walt Edinger uh, real quick. Um, but first, we'll, we're, we're going to give you an update on negotiations. Actually, I'll, I'll give a background on that. Uh, the Liquor Advisory Committee recommended to the board that we enter into negotiations uh, and try and work with the operators. Uh, the board voted seven in favor, uh, one abstention, which was myself, and one person was not present to pursue, um, to form a negotiation team, which was to be led by Bob Merkler, uh, Walt Edinger, and Rufus Lusk, uh, to try and come to some type of compromise with the operator. Walt, can you give a, a it's pretty brief, basically. But if you could give a 30 second. Well, you know what, I'll ask Bob to do it. Bob um, We attempted to have a discussion with Peter Hawking Boss, who's the representative for the bar, to try to initiate some negotiation to see if there was an opportunity to have a discussion if it made any sense. Um, <clears throat> we had some things we want to talk about. He basically said, look, I'm not interested in negotiating at this point. We'll take our best shot with the liquor board, I mean the uh, zoning board. We're going to put a roof on. That's it. Uh, we're going to be held by the uh, SBNA MOU that was already established. Um, if it doesn't work out in our favor, we'll talk to you after that. So there, there really was no negotiation. There was no discussion beyond that. So we made an attempt. Didn't work. And we're here tonight. Thanks, Bob. Okay, so what we're going to do for this portion of the meeting, I know there's a lot of people here, and a lot of people have opinions on this matter. Uh, we're going to try and limit comments to 30 seconds a piece. Um, when someone has the floor and they're speaking, Please do not interrupt them, otherwise you'll be out of order. And the embarrassing thing where someone tells you you're out of order in front of all your peers and neighbors. So please try and be respectful of other people's opinions. Before we begin, there is an important uh, update that came in today that everyone should be aware of. I know that many folks have um, said things to the effect of enforcement is, is, uh, is not occurring with regard to capacity. Um, and that the fire marshal lives 45 minutes outside of Baltimore City, et cetera, et cetera. I have right here a hard copy, which I'm happy to share with anyone in the room. I think I only have two hard copies of it, of documentation of the fire department's policy and an email from the fire chief for Baltimore City, which lays out what that process is. And essentially, uh, what happens is when there's a call uh, to enforce capacity, if someone thinks that a bar is over their limit, the fire department sends the closest available vehicle if the fire marshals are not on duty. And that vehicle meets up with a police officer and they do a, a head count. They basically empty everyone out of the establishment and count for capacity. So if anyone wants to see this, uh, just raise your hand at any point. I'll with just the, say that I'm the person that did the original research about the fire marshal issue and. What Eric's describing is for the typical scenario of a typical bar that may be overpacked, and someone says, this is really overcrowded, we're calling the police. Uh, the way the officers on the ground who actually do this have explained it to me is, the wrinkle here is, this is a bar that's promising to only put 155 people in, but is built for 300. So it has an artificially low capacity. Okay, Diana, let her speak. Hey, let her speak. It's not gonna appear crowded. Anyway, Eric just gave this to us about 10 minutes ago. I'll just say that I talked to the same lieutenant this morning and he reiterated that the fire department does not control or monitor This is from the fire, this is from the, we did, we did not start the comment, we did not start the comment period. This is from the fire chief for Baltimore City, the top ranking fire enforcement official in this city. Anyone who would like to look at the policy. Who are you representing? You know, yeah, who who am I are you, yes, who are you representing? Who signed you up? That, that comment is not germane. The comment is not germane. The comment is not germane. The comment is not germane to the discussion topic. I have a question about what you just said. You are welcome to read it. No, no, I read it. I'm sure. We, we got copies on that. Already. Sure. Thank you, Eric. Uh, what I want to know is uh, when was the last time this method of uh, counting heads uh, was. Uh, Done it has been done twice in 2014 in Federal Hill alone. Not with the bar that has a 
capacity for 300? That bar isn't open, so it's not possible that the fire marshal could come down and, and, and do capacity enforcement. There's a woman over here who would like to speak. She's been waiting patiently. I just wanted to, see, you offered to, that anyone could take a look at it, so I'd like to take a look so. at it. Okay, so with that, we're going to get started with the Mr. Chairman. comment uh, period. Mr. Chairman, Mr. Rodenbaum, I'd like to make a motion that any votes concerning this issue tonight be made by roll call. By motion of denied. The paid, of the paid membership of the Federal Hill Neighborhood Association as reported by the board member in charge of membership. Second. Second. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. The agenda was sent out. There is a motion on the floor, Mr. Hold on. Do not I'm addressing your motion. Made. There's you are not, I am addressing your motion. Call for the there vote. Was, there was a email sent out Call for with, the vote. The, with the fact that we would be doing a secret ballot because I've been approached by 15 neighbors in the last month and a half saying that they are intimidated to speak their opinion at these meetings because of the behavior of neighbors in this room. There will say, not be a vote. They only have to say vote. yes or no. There is a motion on the floor. There. It has been properly seconded. Call for the vote. I will not call for the vote. Robert's rules of order. There is a motion on the floor that the vote be by roll call of the paid membership of the FHNA. Second. There has been a second. And I am calling for the vote. Who was the person who we, we are not having. We are not having a roll call vote this evening. The agenda was sent out in advance. There are neighbors that do not feel comfortable voicing their opinion because they feel intimidated. That is not so say you and the hearsay that you are discussing do not vote I understand that. that, was, that this was is not discussion. based on hearsay. We, we are in discussion mode, not vote mode. Right? You can make a motion on the floor of any business association or any neighborhood association under Robert's Rules of Order. I have made a legitimate motion. It has been seconded. It will now be voted on. No, point of, point of order. There should be discussion of the motion. Discuss. Um, Eric, discussion yes. of the motion? Yes, um, Spencer. Yeah, I just want to say that it's pretty clear how people can feel intimidated in this room. I mean, we've only been here 15 minutes, yet that we can't really conduct a meeting on a regular basis, and people are attacking Eric. And I know it's a heated motion, but I think that there's yeah. nothing wrong with the secret ballot. Why would anybody be against the secret ballot? People do it all the time. <laughs> That's all. Gene. Gene. Yes, I guess my question is in relation to your question. I would like to know the purpose that you, uh, what would be accomplished by having a, a non-secret I'm happy, and I'm more than happy to yes. respond, Jane Worley. Yes. Given my very first question this evening yes. regarding the fact that memberships have been given away and $2,800 of potential revenue for the FHNA has been given away to new members, and it is required that anyone that votes on any issue be a paid member of the FHNA and have been a paid member for 30 days. I am calling for the membership chairman to go down the list of paid members so that we know that the vote is accurate and is exactly the... the We're not, we don't have the time to go through a list of 391 There's, It's the members in the room. Members. That's right. And that's what the notice says too. We have, and, and there is precedent for this in the past and not with the current board, where we have had um, membership drives. Okay. It says so, paid members. Well, that's a typo on the agenda. Well, oh, <laughs> seniors. Okay, well, let me just say this seniors, anyone over 65 is not a paid member. So are you going to exclude them as well? It's, I'm going by what it says on our agenda tonight. This paid members will be voting on this issue. All right. So well, can I have you please verify who is Kelly? a paid member Kelly, by yeah. roll no. call? The board, nine to nothing, voted on this issue. So Walt, 
Jessica, you guys were a part of the group. They voted on this, and they agreed to it. That's true. We didn't vote. We weren't there. Well, Walt wasn't there, but they did. So don't lie. No one's lying. Please No, no, please. OK, you know, stop making personal attacks. There was stop making personal attacks. Stop really, we're not lying. I vote you're out the of the board. Current, the current, the members of the board. Okay. I, the, I didn't say that. Okay, that may have been a misstatement. The, whoever, the current members of the board at that time, and I and I don't know if it was six or seven, whoever, whatever it was, we can go back and look at the minutes. But the board of directors, the elected board of directors of this organization, who you all put. In that position, we voted, which has happened in the past, to do a membership drive at the parking event. This is not unprecedented. You all are making, you're making things up, okay? There's no, there was no ulterior motive other than to get more people involved in the community. And it's not about crossbar, okay? It's about just having more people, more representation within the neighborhood. And you know you can construe anything to your motives, all right? So I'm just, it's, I'm just, I'm done. I'm done with you people. Okay. I really am. I like to, um, as secretary of the group, I would like to suggest that we need to calm things down a little bit, take a, take a breath, and I have a suggestion. I think um, the question. Um, well, that you have is you want to make sure that whoever is voting is an eligible voter, truly eligible voter. Um, I, well, it, you, what can we need to it, you can interpret it that way. What I'm calling for is yes. something that is completely legitimate under parliamentary procedure. When you're voting for a majority vote, it is completely legitimate to ask for a roll call vote of the membership that is here tonight. Would, would it satisfy, I'm just making a suggestion you here. You in, you have our names, you go down the list of who's here, yes. and you ask the paid members what their vote is. I have they say yes or no. That's for right. the sake of time, because I, I think we're already into, uh, anybody tell me the time right now? 7.35. 7.35. Would, in, in lieu of having a verbal roll call, would, the vote, the, when you sign, when you a vote with your card, you sign your name, and then we submit them in so that we can do a count, but we can also verify and make sure. I it may not be in the same evening, but we can still certainly do a count, and if the count is close, we can do what we do in all our elections. We do a recount. Unfortunately, I don't have the confidence. <coughs> What, what do you want, a DNA okay. you want a DNA test? Do you want a DNA test? We are, we are now going to start the discussion period for Crossbar. We are going to change the We are, we are going, no, I, I, no, no, I, no, no, the chair is, de, no, the chair is declining. The chair is declining to entertain the motion. The board, well, the chair is. We have a chair out of order. We have a couple of problems. The chair is out of order. Jessica has made a reasonable suggestion. I would like to, I would, uh, I would like to, I was just a show of hands. Just a show of hands and we could count it. Would, would the people who are concerned about whether or not we have duly uh, qualified people voting, would they object if every single ballot has a name on it? And I assume that people, and I do not, assume this honesty here. I assume that everyone will be honest, everyone will put their own name in there, and everyone will fold their card, hand it to us so that we can count it. If there is a close call, then we will have to look at every single one very, very carefully. Trust but verify. I think that's a very good way to describe there's, it. Trust but verify. What order? There's still a motion on the floor. We should continue discussion or close We're not, discussion. okay, let's or close motion. discussion and move the question. Okay, we can close discussion. This is an alternative point of view. Let's close discussion and move the motion. The motion was to have a roll call uh, for the vote. All those. That is not the motion. No, please, repeat the, please repeat the motion. The motion was 
that a roll call vote be made on anything pertaining to this issue of, by the voting member of the FHNA as the list maintained by the membership chairperson. I, I don't understand that. that. It is okay. saying go down the okay. list and call out the names of who's here no, that paid to okay. vote. Okay, okay, we got your motion. Yes or no? Yes or no? All those in favor of Mr. Runnenbaum's motion, please raise your cards. All those opposed to Mr. Runnenbaum's motion, the opposes have it. Let's begin discussion of crossbar. Yes, sir. Well, we begin discussion. Are we beginning discussion? Yes, sir. Okay. Let me let me uh, take my thirty seconds here. Good evening, everybody. Um, I'm Rufus Lusk. I'm co-chair with Diana uh, Sugg of the uh, Liquor Committee. Uh, just a quick thing on the legal part of this. Uh, we were the beneficiaries of $75,000 in pro bono legal services from Brown, Goldstein, and Levy, which is incredibly generous. I know the board is going to send them a, a, a letter to thank them and we thank them personally. Uh, they finished their term doing that. <coughs> we wouldn't be having this meeting at all tonight if we didn't have a member who stepped up and said, I'll take this on, my firm will take this on, and we'll move it forward. So it's only because of uh, Len Homer that we're really having this discussion. And I want Len to just introduce himself and, and say a couple words. My name's Len Homer. Uh, FC and I have been at 116 Warren since 1982. And uh, I'm of counsel with the law firm of Ober Taylor Grimes and Schreiber. We're a hundred person law firm. I personally have been doing this kind of work for over 40 years. And to include arguing and winning in the Supreme Court of the United States on these kinds of issues. This is a very strong case. It's a simply a question of law. There's going to be no new testimony, no new facts. And uh, if the license is declared invalid, there's nothing to transfer. So the, it's a straightforward case. Um, we, the firm, will be filing on behalf of a number of residents in the community. We would be pleased if the association wants to join the suit. It is not necessary to the appeal. So understand that. And understand that we only have until at the very latest Friday to file. Uh, the other thing is the cause of the dissension, and particularly among the board and the officers, some seem at cross purposes, we are not interested in representing this association if the entire board, including the president, doesn't sign off and say they want us. There would be no cost. Betsy is paying the court costs. The firm is absorbing the legal fees. So this is up to you. Thank you for your time. And you should know that if you vote for it to do it, and then the board has a meeting and decide not to take us, then they've got to come up with some counsel somewhere in a couple of days. Thank you for your generous offer, Lemon Betsy. Comments? And there's 100 people I know someone has something to say on this matter. Mr. <laughs> Remmer? I'd like to recommend you take him up on his offer. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Can't take him up on his offer till there's a vote, but thank, yes, you for this, thank you for the suggestion. Mr. Dorak Fisher. Hi, I'm Keenan Dorak Fisher. Um, I was the chair of the liquor committee last year and uh, rotated out in September. Uh, still remain uh, embroiled in this uh, stuff. So um, just wanted to give three quick um, reasons why I think we should vote yes. Number one, I think that it is uh, an issue of upholding the law. And uh, systematically, I just think that in order to maintain order of, of the bars around here, we need to have precedent that we're going to uphold the law. And in this particular case, my understanding, I'm sure Len knows better, um, the, the, the liquor board in, in February ruled 
that actions that kind of its administrators kind of took, like accepting the payments and so forth, were kind of uh, binding on them. So that, the, it, it, let's say these guys took the money, well now we have to um, uphold, that we, we, that's our ruling, we're, we're bound by that. And I think it's worth appealing to turn that over because uh, th this administrative side of the liquor board, it sh shouldn't be making these legal rulings and if, if you've been at it as long as I have, you realize that, that there's actually some sticky aspects of that. Um, number two, this particular law, which is um, to uh, declare things invalid after they go dormant for more than 180 days or a year, um, is really valuable to, to the community. And in particular, it, present, it prevents the type of thing that we see here where a, a, a bar went down, uh, closed its doors, and then the building remained uh, dilapidated for five years while they were waiting for uh, working out something to do. And number three, as you may have seen my, you know, I mean, my, my critique of the whole thing has been that um, the area is swamped uh, to, to, with too much capacity. Uh, it's oversaturated, as a lot of people have said. And uh, removing a license, and especially this type of license, which is un, uh, kind of, uh, kind of the, the to totally uh, do doesn't require any s sort of food or anything like that. That type of license would be beneficial to remove. Thank you, Ian. Well, I think we ought to vote no. Um, there's many reasons why I think we ought to vote no. One of them is that this has been going on long enough. Uh, the Federal Health Association had an MOU. Most of that has been agreed upon. Um, I don't think there's any reason to beat a dead horse. When I think about this community and this neighborhood, uh, if it's overdrawn with alcoholics, well, then we need another bar. I mean, we don't need six <laughs> <million> <laughs> bars. Hey, not six. Let's take another bar. What's another bar going to do? Going to create more jobs, right? More jobs mean a better economy, and a better economy means a better life. I mean, that's the, the simple fact. Mr. Wyman has the floor. Mr. Wyman has the floor. And I don't call people to drink drunk. But think about this, too. Riley's isn't a bad bar. I mean, when I have people that I work with, and I, they come from out of town, I bring them into the Federal Hill neighborhood, I, I take them to Riley's. I don't take them to other places. What's to say this place isn't going to be as good as Riley's is? I mean, I've never seen many altercations at Riley's. I've seen more at Federal Hill meetings. I mean, this isn't good. I mean, we're not, we're not, we're not representing the neighborhood the way the neighborhood needs to be represented. I mean, we're not representing the whole of the people. I mean, I don't like walking past three dilapidated houses. I mean, it, we think too much about what Fells Point's doing and what Canton's doing. Let's not look to them. Let's set our own standards. Let's make South Baltimore, Federal Hill, the best in Baltimore and make them want to be like us. And we can do it together. That's all. Vote no. Vote no. Thank you, Mr. Wyman. Comments? Says. I think the implication there that there was a five um, year period when those places sat dormant, that the implication was that there were people knocking down our doors to build some really great place on those places that sat dormant. The fact is, is that Federal Hill is in a very precarious sort of tipping point. And I'm, I know that you're gonna say tipping point as far as you know, bars are concerned, but we are at a very precarious tipping point about the message that we send to business in general as far as our friendliness and our <coughs> attitude. We are, we need to tell business, especially businesses, as you say, that are not, let's say, um, of, of, of young people's party, hearty bar kind of place, but a respectable, more restaurant-oriented type place that we are not the neighborhood that is a just say no neighborhood. And um, so I think that the, the idea that for during this five years that people are just beating down the doors that would have filled those places, those places will be damn lucky to have a nice place fill those storefronts. Thank you, Jane. Ms. McCabe? I think in response to what you're saying, Jane, is that, you know, we're talking about a mega bar. And the more bars you have there, the more other businesses don't want to come down to Federal Hill. I think that's number one. And I think this is, I agree with you, it's nice to have nice places. We've worked very hard in kind of defining that this was a place that we'd like to have at 150, but not as a mega bar. 
I mean, there are too many bars in that square block as, the, as it is. It would be nice to have a restaurant. Uh, the new beer garden is, in fact, um, going to be a mega bar because that's what the capacity is. And I think to be, we want to be our own, Federal Hill wants to be, you know, different than the other places, but I think that Fells Point is in much better control of what's going on in their neighborhood than we are here. We are. I mean, they are because they have laws that dictate that you can only have 150 per bar. We don't have that here. And Let's go to Falls to Point tonight. You can come to Falls Point with me tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Let her see. What do you think you've been? Thank you for your comment, Rose. Mrs. Perot, and <coughs> yes, you had your hand up. Hi. Um, I have lived here for about nine years. Um, I've walked past these vacant buildings for all nine of them, including the one that is um, right across from, from Cross Street, which I used to take my car to, actually, um, about eight years ago. Um, I'm just really kind of fed up as with, with seeing these vacancies constantly. Um, I've kind of resigned myself to the fact that there could be a nice restaurant that goes there or something like that. And, you know, the truth is at this point, you know, we have the things that you wanted. It's going to close at 1130. The mega bars, they don't even start getting these, you know, drunking, dancing business until 11. So this is going to close on Friday and Saturday nights. Um, I work in a very large law firm in the city and partners and I go to um, the Rams Head Beer Garden constantly. People really, really enjoy it and it is what we make it. And if, if we can go to these places and we can make these places classy, then I am all for it. And I really do want this to be over. I moved into this neighborhood about a year ago. So excited to move from um, South Baltimore over to here. I was so excited with the community. It's been eye-opening at this point coming to these meetings. Um, but I think that this should be over at this point. If we can put the 2,000 hours, volunteer hours that we put into this into something that really makes our community a great place, I'm really excited to continue to live here for the rest of my life. I just wanted to clarify one point. Um, it's the outdoor area that's closing at 11.30. The bar is not closing until all the other bars close at 2. It's only the outdoor area that the time was negotiated. Um, and the other point is, is that the license is our, our, our concerns. I think some of the people that are here tonight that haven't been going through this with us, I think we've been misunderstood and um, misrepresented. None of us want those empty buildings and none of us would, would not want to see a restaurant there. Our problem is, and I know it's been said, and I'm just going to say it again in my words, is that we wanted 150 people and a good restaurant with a license that was for food and alcohol and for the outdoor seating area to have a cover so that neighbors would not be affected by the loud noises. What they agreed to on paper is 150, but they never changed the design of the building. And the building is designed for 300 people. And that's what the fire marshals are going to see. They're going to see 150 people sitting in a building for 300 is not going to look like it's over capacity. So it's going to be a very, very short time before this structure will be filled to 300. And we still will not have much more than beer and pretzels outside and, you know, some sausages. So we're not talking about the kind of food that's at Riley's. It's diff if this is different. And uh, we have been, as Bob said when we first started, we've been trying to negotiate just some points. We're not saying go away and don't do this. We're saying please try to make this something that our community will appreciate and enjoy, and it won't be just one group that will go to it, it will be the gray hairs and the young people. And because um, we all live here and we want to live here and we enjoy it. And I really, I, I'm, I'm so uncomfortable with the misunderstanding of what our intentions are. And we have been very misrepresented. Thank you, Glenn. The gentleman in the second row. Hi, John McNary. I'm on the cross. I'm actually on the cross. I guess what I just want to say, I haven't been here as long as a lot of you, about three or four years now. Um, and what I kind of see as 
sort of just becoming an insider, I guess, is really a community transition. I know a lot of you have been here for a very long time. I respect a lot of your homes and what you've done with the neighborhood. Um, but a huge part of the reason that I moved here and looking around and just knowing some of the neighbors, I can say probably a lot of them did too, is, is because of what's going on down on Cross Street. I'd, I'll be the first one to tell you that we don't need another Stalking Horse, we don't need another Mad River, um, and that sort of thing. Um, and the design of it aside, I, I think if you look at what a beer garden is supposed to be, it's supposed to be a more community uh, friendly thing. You, you, you all sit together, and, and the, the type of, and, and while the food may not be Riley's, um, I think if you look at a lot of beer gardens just around the country or even on the East Coast in New York, Philadelphia, places like that, you know. These are beers that are costing you seven, eight, nine, up to fourteen bucks a piece. So you're not going to get the two dollar Miller Lite special. Uh, people that are really looking for that. Um, you know, like I said, I can understand where certain, you know, especially neighbors that are on uh, is that Pulte there. Um, yeah. Um, you know, I can see where that might be a bit of a distraction. But you know, that's where they have been and said, okay, we'll close the outside at eleven thirty. Um, I think eventually, uh, and I know someone kind of <coughs> used the term, we have to kind of just say. We've done what we can, we've asked for what we can, they've given what they're gonna give, something's gonna happen, and, and those are definitely buildings that need something there, and I think this is a great thing, so I'm, I'm gonna vote for it. Thank you, John. I'm Sheldon Slater, I live on the cross street, across the street from Porter. I used to live in Newark, Delaware, college town, sort of suburban, decided I wanted to live in the city. We looked at Philadelphia, we looked at Baltimore. We made many trips to both. We chose Baltimore because it was more fun than Philadelphia. And the reason it was more fun, it had good bars and good breakfasts. So the more bars, the better. So I'm going to say. committee here and I just want to make a couple points had the crossbar people done what they were licensed for which is 155 people in two storefronts no food nobody would have said anything fine that's what you're licensed for the problem came up when they wanted to double the size and they wanted to double the number of people who are in there the beginning they said we'll have a kitchen we'll have pretzels we'll have sausages we'll sell a little food Later, when the pressure came on them, they said, we'll sell, make 50% of our money on food, 50% on alcohol. But they didn't change the size of the kitchen. They didn't change the menu. The menu is exactly the same slim menu. It's not a bigger kitchen. So it's hard to believe they're actually going to sell more food. When the zoning board said to them, you cannot have it both ways. If you want to have an outdoor area, you have to be a restaurant and go along with what a restaurant means. And I think everyone would love that. It means no bar out there, table service, et cetera. Well, they've already responded to that. They don't want to be a restaurant, and they've made it clear to the zoning board. So everybody who wants a restaurant, let's keep in mind, they've said they are not going to be a restaurant. They are going to try to get it through the zoning board without a roof as a tavern and if zoning says you can't do it my understanding from their attorney is that um, then they'll put a roof on it and there'll be a bar and then you'll have a stalking horse situation with a four storefront big huge place that's a big bar that's selling a minimal amount of food they have promised the other neighborhood association they would do 50 50 sales of food but 50 50 sales of food capacity on these places all anyone has to do is go down to the liquor board, as I did, and look at the biggest places that cause trouble in the neighborhood, Stalking Horse, Mad River, et cetera. There's not a single violation on capacity. There's not a single violation on food service, et cetera. So we know how well this is being patrolled right now. Number two, for anyone who says Federal Hill is just say no to business, let me tell you the facts. The facts are, in the last 10 years, there have been 17 bar expansions in this neighborhood. I think two of them were fought. So 17 have gone through. The number of bar stools has risen by 40%. There are an extra 1,500 drinkers in this neighborhood tonight than there were 10 years ago when the state legislature said, 
federal hills getting out of control, we're going to draw a box around it and not let any more liquor licenses in. So Federal Hill and the city have said yes, 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 yes. So somebody comes and wants to have a 2,000 square foot patio, 37 feet from Vince Metal's house, 50 feet from Ed Kelly's house, and my thing is, are we going to stand up for the people on Pulteney Street who have to live there? Who do we represent? We have 36 bars in this area right now. We have one of the highest densities in the city. We have three or four of the largest bars in Baltimore City three blocks from here. Do you want a restaurant? Yes, I want a restaurant. Keenan can quote you, is it seven or eight restaurants that have left or failed as we have tilted towards becoming the place to get wasted? The, uh, the restaurants do not want to come here anymore. Of course a restaurant doesn't want to go with stalking horse riot with all that stuff going on. So we would love it if they would turn, we begged them, make it a real restaurant. We will pack it. We will pack it. And the answer we got through so many channels is we won't make as much money on a restaurant as we will on a bar. The profit margins are huge. The word on the street is that Mother's makes $60,000 in one day on a Ravens game day on Purple Patio. And if you don't think that's what this operator hopes to do with his location, he gave us the answer when zoning said, make it a restaurant or else put a roof on it. The answer has come back. They do not want a restaurant. They want a tavern. We are trying to stand up to try to protect and not have things get more out of control. What the police have told us time after time. Okay. I would like if someone in the audience would just, um, I'll do it for myself. Um, but I think um, I would like someone to actually, if there would be a little bit dis less discussion about this specific car and a little bit more discussion about the, the value of having this lawsuit, because that's what we're really voting about. We're voting about the validity of this license, but it is hoped to be a precedent-setting um, case. And I was wondering if there are any other people in the audience who would like to speak to that specific issue. Mr. Van Dyke? <coughs> oh, that was a great setup. Uh, because Susan, my wife, just was me. Everybody's forgetting the fact that all uh, we're asking is, stand up, please. All we're asking is, did the liquor board abide by the law? And that's that's what the lawsuit is about. So um, I plan to vote yes because I think we need to go ahead and say, does the liquor board abide by what the law says? Thank you, Bill. Sir, Hi, I'm Sean O'Connor. Um, I just think it's as far as the lawsuit goes. And challenging the validity. If we're if we're challenging it based on the fact that we consider it to be expired, I think it's a bit ridiculous that licenses would be able to expire when they cannot be renewed. There cannot be any new ones. What? So, correct. what? That's correct. Can you explain what? The what? So long. Right. There was no business yeah. operating. So no. If if eventually it's the law. It's the law. Right. What happens to your driver's license? <laughs> You renew it, right. yeah, that's, that's but you can get another one no. it's it's without it. due to the moratorium if when the licenses expire, if you can't get another one, then you're out of luck and you are not able to operate or run a business in the neighborhood. I think we need to talk. Um, Sally is a lawyer. I'd like her to um, be recognized. After, right after Ms. Ms. Fair, she had her hand up first. Okay. Sally can go. Yes, please. Sally. Oh. Hi, everyone. I'm Sally Warrick, for sure. And um, I am an attorney, and I have reviewed the, um, the arguments that were made before the, li the liquor board, uh, the liquor board's analysis, as well as the brief submitted by, by the, um, the owners, the counsel for the owners. And I really do think that this is, this is actually uh, a question of whether the liquor board followed the law here. And it is a precedent set, a potentially precedent setting interpretation of what does it mean to let a license go on for so long, not use a license for so long that it should expire. 
And that was, you know, that was precisely the question, the intent of the legislature. If a license is not a property interest, a license is a privilege. If you don't use it, if you don't, if you don't effectuate the transfer in time, it expires by operation of law. And what the liquor board essentially said was, oops, well, we accepted their money, so therefore, the license, we have to find that the license is still valid, essentially. <coughs> and so, um, I think there are really strong grounds for appealing the validity of the license. It won't take anything out of the, the neighborhood association uh, other than, you know, giving, giving the consent to let the attorneys write the briefs and argue the case. Um, the other thing, I know people are frustrated. It's been a long time. I'm frustrated, too, because we should have won in the circuit court the first time around. Um, the circuit court really punted it back to the liquor board, who then essentially said, well, we did accept their money, and so I guess we have to find that this is still valid. Um, I don't think it's a, a very good, um, it's not a very strong legal opinion. It's subject to appeal. I think it, it has a really great chance of being overturned on appeal. And I do think it's important public policy to let liquor licenses expire when they haven't been used in a certain period of time. And that's the call the legislature made, and I think we should let the circuit court determine it. Thank you, Sally. Um, I guess, speaking so much to what Jessica said, I don't view this, and I didn't come in here viewing this tonight as a discussion about crossbar yes or crossbar no. Again, I look at this as being a question of validity, and all of us are citizens. All of us are taxpayers. And we have a liquor control board that really has been documented is incredibly dysfunctional and out of control. And I think it's our responsibility as citizens of this city to hold them accountable and to proceed with this because it is important for all of the city. I don't view this as a Federal Hill issue. I view this as a citywide issue and it's one that we have the privilege of presenting to the court system and letting it play out there. And so I guess I'm in favor of supporting, looking at voting yes um, for this to go to circuit court. And it really, that has no opinion to me on whether you want crossbar or don't want crossbar. Thank you, Ms. Baird. Mr. Saville? Hi, uh, I'm Neil Saville. I live over on Brindle Street. I'm also a member of the liquor committee. Um, I got involved in this neighborhood association after I saw this neighborhood association run Michaels out of town and then attempted to run Crossbar out of town. It seems like every new exciting event or business that is going to happen in this neighborhood, this very association tries to kill it and smash it. Um, it it's very frustrating for a resident that, that's lived here for nine, almost ten years. I like to see new bars open. I like to see new restaurants open. And it hasn't happened. Instead, things are closing. Um, it, it's pretty disheartening. I, I do want to mention that there's a fixed number of licenses in this area. Fixed. We can never get a new one after we appeal this. If we appeal this and it gets removed, it's going to be one less business, that's a restaurant or a bar or both, that will be able to serve liquor. I want more options. The population has doubled in Federal Hill over the last 10 years. There's apartments that are housing 200 or 300 people and now everything's packed. Why are we reducing the amount of businesses that can serve liquor? We should be increasing that. Please vote no. Do not delay this any further. Let's move on and do something great. Uh, the, the chair will now entertain both. Okay. I've got a question though, uh, uh, with uh, Len. Len, did you say that you're, you're, you're going to file suit for the other bars around here? That we're filing suit on behalf of individuals residing in the neighborhood. Members. So that the people, challenge is like going to go forward regardless of what so you're, so you're filing suit against the liquor board? Yes. yes. So he's filing suit against the liquor board. No. What difference does it make? It's we should just let him file suit for it. I mean, we should, right. we yeah. should that, just let him file suit. Look, I'm against the, uh, this huge bar. I don't think we need another. 300 feet far, and we know it's going to happen if we just out. But we should make it as tough on anybody to come in here, okay? Mr. Savile, I appreciate what you said, but we've got plenty of drunken people around here that are destroying this neighborhood. People don't want to come into Federal Hill anymore because of the fact that what goes on up here is terrible. The police haven't done their job up here. They get uh, things thrown at you, uh, people, these drunks pee on the houses, 
They knock things over. You've all been party and privilege to that. If Len is already suing for, uh, for individuals, what difference does it make? The, the, okay? the point is, the point is that he's suing. He's going ahead with the suit anyway. So why shouldn't we back at least the suit, all right, to show people that it's tough to get a license here and keep it. And if you're not going to keep it right, this association is going to make sure, okay, that you're going to abide by the rules. That memorandum of understanding from uh, that was signed is pure baloney. We all know what's going to happen in 10 years or five years. So my point is, let them go ahead and sue. It's nothing out of us. It's no cost to us. And we'll see what happens. Thank you for your comment, Barry. And to answer your question, uh, the difference is they're, they're the specific group of neighbors, as opposed to FH&A, may have different standing. So that's that's unclear what the result of that is. With that being said, with that being said, hold on, with that being said, it's 808. Yeah, I, I, that chair will entertain a motion to end discussion and move the question. Don't move. Is there a second to Mr. Van Dyke? Yes, sir. OK, all of those in favor of ending discussion and voting, please raise your yellow cards. All of those opposed to ending discussion. OK, the question will now be moved. The question is, does FH&A wish to appeal the BLLC's decision of February 20th, 2014, that the license at 12 to 18 East Cross Street is viable in circuit court for, for Baltimore City, pardon me. If you write yes on your card, if you write yes, that means you want to go to circuit court. If you write no, that means you do not want to go to circuit court. Before we vote, this is not a vote for yes or no, would everyone please raise their hands if they understand that if you vote yes, that means you want to go to circuit court. Does everyone understand that? Show of hand. Anyone confused about that? Okay. And if you vote no, that means you do not want to go to circuit court. So everybody on the count of three, if you want to go to circuit court, you will vote yes. yes. If you do not want to go to circuit court, you will vote no. no. Thank you very much. Amy, Sam, Filippo, and Walt Edinger will be collecting the cards. Uh, Eric, names on the card. Write names on the card. Write names, names on the card, please. Write your names on the card. That is not a secret vote. <laughs> you do not need to write names on the card. That motion failed. Wait a we have a videographer. Did he notice? He's getting ready to be intimidated. <laughs> At the results of the vote, 56 were in favor of going to circuit court, 44 were opposed. Len, will, our board will be in touch with you. Thank you again for your generous offer. Uh, some of us are going to do agave after this. You're more than welcome to join us, get to meet some new neighbors. We're going to try and do that every week. Is there a motion to end the meeting? Motion to end the meeting. Seconded. Seconded.